Hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick and we're playing Stationers. Well, what can I say about Amy? Go back home. Gah, how did you get in there? Yeah, Amy is challenging. Amy is doing her own thing sometimes. Are you actually mining or just frolicking in the fields? But Amy is also digging up a crap ton of ore for me. Well, especially when I got a herd of them. They go out for the most part, they behave themselves. We've had to do a few tricks to get here, but for the most part they look after themselves. Here we have Amy. What do we need to actually get her to run? Well, first up you need an Amy bot, of course. You'll need a battery and you'll need an IC. Now, as with the suit, when we're programming Amy, she's not going to tell us anything. We point our configuration tab to it and she just gives us a silent treatment. But as with the suit, we can connect her up to a, a logic transmitter. Once again, if we have them, just set to Amy, switch it on. And now this will give us all of the information we need. So this is telling us if there's any mineables nearby, what mode she's in, her position and velocity. So that will come in very handy when writing the script because we'll need to know all of that. Now the script we're working with today will is the, the default one that comes from the developers. You can get off the workshop just under Rocket to Guns, who is Dean Hall, who's a lead developer on the program. He's given us this this uh, program here as an example of how, how Amy works. It goes on for a bit, but it is quite simple in its operation. Now Amy is fairly well automated. She's just a matter of assigning a, a mode to her, and she'll go and carry that out on her own without any without any further intervention. Once she's completed doing that task, her mode will return to zero. So when we're doing the code, it's just a matter of assigning, assigning a task to her, then just getting the code to wait until, until she returns to mode zero. So what's happened with this code here is the robot is put into Roam, which is the mining mode. Once it's mined, it will return to zero. So it has a blue loop here just to wait till it returns to zero. Once it's returned to zero, it checks to see if the storage is full, which would be a mode six. If not, start mining. So you've got to mine, wait, then another one saying, keep mining until it's full, and then it moves on to the next task. Next task is where it just assigns us some locations to it. These are locations that were on someone else's game, so we'll have to change them to match our game. It sells it to path to the target, then goes into a loop and wait until it gets there. Once it's there, it goes into the unload mode. Then it goes into a loop and waits till that's finished. Then we give it some more coordinates, tell it to path back out to the mining site, and wait for it to get there, then back to the start and we mine again. So to use this script, the first thing we've got to do is set up our unload location, which is this position here. We just need an XYZ location of where we want her to unload. And for that, we're going to need a GPS tablet. Now I've set up a deposit spot over here, which is just an inlet chute connected to a silo. It's just a matter of standing underneath it and getting a location. So it's minus 28, zero, minus 29. There we have it. Coordinates are in. So it's just a matter of now coding this onto a chip and placing it into Amy. So export, pop the chip in. Now the way this code works is if she'll start mining wherever she is and she'll mine until she's full. She'll remember where she left off, drop off, the, drop off the ore, and return back to the field where she finished. So we're just going to take her out of the field and get her started mining in a location. There we go, starts mining. Now, she'll start mining until the backpack there is full. So it picked up 89 so far. Now, if you are planning on using Amy in the future, one of your games there, it's usually a good idea to try and restrict all of your manual mining in the early days to, to, to one location so that you're not trying to get Amy to navigate through a, a heap of massive holes. Got a full pack, she's probably on her way home again now. 
She's happy that she's arrived at the location. Now she's emptying out. When she's finished emptying, she should turn around and head back to where she came from. Alright, now so we can look out and got no idea where Amy is, but thanks to our data transmitter, we can now look at this and find out where she is. Now we can see that she's in mode 5, so she's trying to path her way back, but she is not moving. So she's going to sit in mode 5, so there she goes, trick, trick back to mode 0. Because it had given up on trying to find its way home. Then went into mining mode, mode 3, and it was immediately full, so went to mode 6 and went back to trying to find its way home again. So that's one of the issues we have with the Amy there is the pathing routine, but it does have two movement routines. One is a path to target and one is a move to target. Now the path to target will try and find a way around things, whereas the move to target will just take a straight line. Um, so pros and cons of each one of course, the straight line will run into everything that's in between it and where it needs to go, whereas the pathing one will get confused and not be able to actually get to where it wants to go. There's a, diff there's a, number of a couple of simple, simple changes we can make to the script. Uh, I find that when getting these ones, I say at the moment the pathing script is a bit buggy. So we can just change that to a move to target and on the way back as well. Now I've just got to remember that this one, it will go straight line. So if you wanted to mine something on the other side of the base, Forget about it, because it'll just try and go straight through your base. Um, but if you make sure you have it on the same side as your dumping dumping port, and there's no big holes in the way, we should be all right. Confirm. We'll export that and drop that back in your noodle. Nighty out. Go wandering. Now, so as we drop her off, she's already full. So she went into mining mode. But she's already really realised she's full and now she's back into mode 2, which is the path to target. And she's motoring along now. But the move mode seems to be, at the moment, the more, more reliable way of getting her to move. The next thing we can do is, she, when she mines, she will roam within 15, 15 grids of where you put her down. So she can, when you drop her down, she can move 15 grids from where that position was and mine. Then she has to mine again, she can move another 15 grids, so she will wander a bit. Um, this script then sort of saves where she finishes up before going back, going home again. So then she can go back to where she left off. Now the issue with this is she can wander a bit and she might wander around too close to your base or the other side of your base and then want to actually path straight through your base or dig up something that's underneath your base. So another way to do that is instead of saving it, saving the position when she's finished mining, we are going to save the position when you first drop her down and she will always return to that point. Now the pros and cons of this are she will eventually mine that location out. Uh, if she gets to wander wherever she goes, chances are she'll always find something to mine. But if we keep dropping at the same spot, she'll stay away from our base, but she will eventually mine everything in that area. But so if we want to do that one, we can take these three lines and put them right up to the start of the code. Right, so at the very start of the code now, we will save, so we're loading, loading the positions from the robot, where the robot currently is, and we're saving them in position X, Y, Z. And the code never goes back up that far to try and reread those ones. So they'll always be set once when you first start the program, and that's it, they'll always be held in there. So when you go to return, it'll save the ones that were set as our home position. When it has to go back out in the field, it'll go back to the same position where we dropped her off in the first place. So that way, she's going to stay in that area and not wander too far. Now to make this observation job a bit easier, we can write up another script and hook up a heap of sensors, or a heap of displays to this. So I can just read the X and Y position from the from the reader and just put them on some some displays for us. I have my transmitter connected to Amy. I'm displaying the mode, the Z position, the X position. I'm not too worried about the Y position because that's just a vertical position. 
current battery and a number of mineables that are nearby. So she's still got plenty of things to dig up. She's mining, she's finished mining, she's back to mining again. And those are the coordinates. So she's still moving around looking for stuff to mine. There we go, finished mining. Number six, she's full again. Now number two means she's pathing, she's on her way back. She comes into range, she switches to mode four, which is to unload, and starts dropping everything in the chute. When she's unloaded, she should return to mode zero. The program will detect that it's changed to mode zero, and the next step is to go back out to mine where she, she was first dropped off. Okay, mode zero, mode two, she's passing back out again now. She'll hopefully go out to where I dropped her off the first time. So this way she won't progressively wander in any direction. Now this one works well if you're happy to keep, keep dragging around into the field to show her where to mine. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it has its advantages in that it's, it, it's easy to go out and select a spot. You just take her out there and drop her out. But it doesn't mean you have to go out there and keep dropping her in that position every time you wanted to go and mine. If you pick a position using your GPS, you can just go find a spot and you can then hard code that spot into the code. So then all you have to do is plug it in and say, this is your mining location. So she'll automatically go out there. You can just let her go from base. She knows where to mine. She knows where to come back to. Now the advantage of that one is you don't have to take her out in the field. You can just let her go wherever she is. The disadvantage of that is if you wanted to go mine somewhere else, you've got to recode the chip and give her a new chip. So just down the bottom where it is leaving and heading back to its mining position, we change those values here. 32, 0, and minus 86. Right, so the coordinates set, but when we start the program, the first thing she's going to do is start mining. We don't want that to happen. We want her to head out to the mining location first. So leave is the tag we want to start on. So the first thing we're going to do after we set the position is just jump to leave. So the first thing it does when it starts up, it jumps and it'll start the program down here where it heads out to its mining location. Confirm, export, Pop that in your head. Now I switch it on. She should head out in that direction immediately. And off we go. So there you have it. There's a basic operation of Amy with a script from the developers there. Got it to work. Made a few changes. I mean, just tailor it to however you like it to work. Uh, just because that's the script you're given doesn't mean you have to agree with it. It doesn't have to be the way you like it. It's been made so you can do it different ways. So we can do it different ways. So, there you go. Amy's working. Can be a bit of trouble to get it going, but at the end of the day, that's a lot of ore. Oh, I should have brought a, built a... I need to build a sorting station now. Oh, oh that's going to be a lot of work. There you go. Now, as always... You can do it your own way. You can leave it at that. There's a number of different scripts on the workshop. You can go with them, or you can build your own. It wouldn't be like my way to build my own and change something as simple as this into something ridiculously complicated. That's just not the thing I do. <sighs> Maybe next time, though. That's about all we've got time for today, though. So until next time, thank you for the your Amy. Happy building. See ya. <laughs> uh, don't make a comment. Oh. Yeah, push it in there hard. <laughs>